What up my good people? Welcome to another episode. This is going to be yet another tips and tricks episode number eight. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Maya. We're going to actually go into Maya and start changing things from the default setup to make it specifically for you as an animator, uncluttered, clean, ready for you to work. I'm going to show you the way I actually have my Maya set up. I'm going to show you some hotkeys that will make your life easier. So we're going to talk about all of that on this tips and tricks episode. So get ready, buckle up. It's going to be good. Let's do it. Here you have the default Maya, same old. Uh, as soon as you, uh, you open Maya, this is what you see. Looks very nice, very neat, very organized. Um, and in my 2018, which is the one that I'm using uh, here, uh, normally you see the highlighted features. This is good to have. If you actually don't want to see this anymore after you see it a couple of times, normally you don't show up this. Seeing what's highlighted, as in the new features that Autodesk adds, it's always useful, so I normally leave that on. Click that, and that won't bother you again. Um, in this Maya here, you actually can change your uh, workspaces. So um, I'm just gonna click on the animation so you can see what you get. So it changes the layout here to something that an animator uh, would like. This is very generic, and this will work for most animators, which is great if you're just getting started, it's no problem. It doesn't change the layout too much. It changes it enough for you to know that here you have the outliner, so you can pick things. Let's say a controller is hidden, or maybe you actually do want to do some changes. Then you can just quickly go in here and just select things that are perhaps hidden. Uh, your channels, you're always working on the channels. They have also this collapsible windows here, which is if you double click, or if you just single click, sorry, you can actually collapse these windows so you can show them individually. That's pretty cool. I use this a lot now. Even though this layout is great, uh, to me personally, I feel like there's a better way of actually doing a layout for animators. So if you're gonna go back to the Maya Classic again, this is what we had before. Um, I'll show you guys how I set up my workspace to make sure that it's as minimal and is as useful as possible. Uh, hopefully it will work for you guys as well. This is just the way I have mine set up, so feel free to use it. If not, then great too. So the first few things that I do when I have the brand new layout, remove all the tools and all the shelves that I don't need because half of the shelves, or most of the shelves this really, um, I don't really use, I don't really touch ever. What I normally do is go to shelf editor here and uh, go through my sh the shelves, all the shelves that exist. And if I don't use a shelf, I actually go and bin it. So, so curves and surfaces, don't use. Poly and modeling, I don't use. Xgen, uh, you can delete. Sometimes it comes back uh, automatically. It's something that Maya does. Uh, mesh, don't use. Emotion graphics, I don't use. So now you have a clean uh, shelf that is catered to you. And you only have the custom stub where you can just add all your scripts in here. Then I go into minimizing the uh, workspace. So uh, if you go into UI elements, you can actually take out the box by clicking that little, this little thing here. Status line I use, which is the thing here on top. Uh, the shelf I use as well, so I'll leave it. Time slider, definitely use. And range slider I use. So this is the time slider and this is the range slider. But now uh, the command line here, this thing here. So this is to basically um, put commands here, press enter, and you can just call a command. I never use this normally because I just go to the script editor di directly. So I can just take that off. Uh, the helpline uh, is useful, but we'll move it around. You can ignore this. This is basically a tools, which is a plugin. Um, you can ignore it. Mine doesn't come with this by default. Another thing that I do is actually this range slider here. If you grab it here, you can move it to other places and it docks. So I like to move it up here. I want to make sure that it's as clean as possible. I just want to have my time slider. This one, I normally just set a time, leave it there, and then I don't want it to bother me again. So this toolbox, uh, I take that as well. As you become a, an experienced animator, an experienced modeler, uh, you start using shortcuts for this. You have this, and then if you actually want to select it, if you want to rotate it, you select this and you keep on going back and forth all the time in order to select it. So the natural step to take is to find out what can I do to not constantly do this. So normally you have a shortcut that allows you to go through your tools and eventually you end up just 
not using this. So the same thing for this, this is to select different viewports. Normally you have your viewport selected if you press space and I feel like that's a better way of going through viewports. Right now I'm pressing space and I'm going through the different viewports. Use for this becomes irrelevant after a while. You will take less space if you just go here and just remove that. Now it's clean and you have a viewport that is starting to get a little bit more minimalistic. So let's go through the options which are now here and I'll show you guys some of the stuff that I change in order to make it a bit uh, better. So my time slider here, I tend to make this bigger, as big as I possibly can. I normally either work with four times or two times, so two times is definitely good enough. Sometimes I go four times, especially if I have a wavelength of I'm working with audio. Um, putting it up to four times is nice because you can see a lot, a lot more of what the audio is doing. But two times is how I animate them most of the time. See the keys, the keys actually kind of, uh, they are very thin here. So if you change the thick size, to, to be three times, you mean that you can see your keys much better. So that's really useful. Uh, another thing that I do is if you go to manipulators, whenever you're rotating something, you can see that your lines are pretty thin and it's difficult to pinpoint. You have to go really close to the lines in order to select them. This is personal preference, but I like mine, uh, my line size to be bigger. So if you actually kind of change the line size here, it can go either really big, but uh, I like to mark mine to be around two or three. Let's leave it at two. Another thing that I like to do as well is to change my background. So if you go to color settings, you have 3D views and you have gradient background, the background, which is, this is this, the background that you have at the moment. You can put it just the color you want. You can change this to be purple if you like. This is like whatever you like. This will work fine. I personally like to make it gradient. In order to make a gradient, you go here uh, to your preferences and you go down to display uh, background gradient on and off so if you kind of click that on you have your gradient show up or not so if you press save now you have your gradient and whatever these two colors are those are the colors that's going to show up in your on your background so i like to make maya to be light and as if it was daytime inside my maya all the time <laughs> something like that and then you have something that looks a bit better and it's like the sky. My one set that I've set many years ago. I don't exactly remember the swatches, but if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and I'll give you guys the exact swatches of mine so you guys can copy it if you guys like it, uh, if that's something you're into. Sometimes this doesn't get saved and what happens is that when you close your Maya and reopen it, you lose all your changes. So to make sure that you get your changes saved, you go to save preferences and extra step to make sure that you get it all saved and it's yours. If you go to save current a workspace as you can name it YouTube because why not that workspace is now saved next time you open Maya uh, that workspace is there even if it reverts back to Maya classic for some reason you just click that and your workspace is here one thing I forgot to mention is that this uh, info box here I actually move it to this side and then I move this to here so what happens is that as you're doing things let's say you want to save the scene save as you can see for here for a split second there there was like a little bar that showed up that basically had your saving progress so that makes it much more in your face he shows you what Maya is doing and also uh, this controllers here become a bit more handy to go from here to all the way to the corner it takes much more time than going from here all the way down here also what I change is if you go to files and projects I go to OS native in terms of the dialog box that shows up so basically what happens is if you save that and you know how before when you saved it was the maya native so the mac specific window instead of getting the maya specific and same goes for windows you actually get the windows window instead of getting the maya one and i found it much more handy especially since i use a lot of bookmarks and shortcuts here and i believe that is all i have for the maya setup okay so now we've set up all the viewport exactly the way we want it to. Everything is looking neat and nice. Let's talk hotkeys. I will highly advise you for you to stop using the default Maya keys and start setting your own hotkeys. As an animator, there's a lot of repetition that you do with your hands as you're working on the keyboard. And a lot of the keys are very far apart, unfortunately. 
So you need to start working on your own hotkeys in order to actually kind of streamline your workflow, not get carpal tunnel as you're actually going from key to key. I'm going to show you what works for me. After many years of trying different hotkeys, this setup works perfectly. Uh, one thing I should say about hotkeys is that you will not get used to them straight away, no matter whose hotkeys you're copying or if you're creating your own. You always have to live two weeks to about a month in order to get used to it because your muscle memory will not kick in until you actually make a lot of mistakes. But once you do actually get it, it's gonna feel like an extension of your arm. It's gonna feel like you just, it's just natural. You don't have to look at it. You're just looking at the screen, you're working away, and then you're just doing it just like you do, let's say, Control Z. So once you get your brain rewired to work with your new hotkeys, it's going to feel really natural. But you have to make sure that the hotkeys make sense in the first place. Let me show you my hotkeys and hopefully they will make sense to you as much as they do to me. If not, feel free to change them around. This is just mine. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna show you just the basics, basics that I have, uh, just to not overwhelm you guys, because over the years I've managed to get loads of hotkeys around. Um, so I'm gonna show you the basics, the ones that are more useful for me as an animator, uh, and the ones that are easy to set up. The first ones that you should set up, let's just open the hotkey manager, editor. So if you are working with my 2016, uh, this will be slightly different because I think this was introduced on 2017 or 2018 um, but it's, it's pretty neat how it works what you get especially when you start is that you actually do this a lot and I would suggest that as you become a more experienced animator that you don't really slide your keys so much but you actually go between keys uh, mine gives you two keys to do that which is comma and and you can go key before and key after. So basically you can just go between all your keys. Getting used to this habit of actually going in between keys uh, like this will allow you to see your animation in single frames, which is more reminiscing to what a 2D animator would do when he's actually flipping through the pages. So for you to do this and just go between your keys and get used to the idea that you're just seeing what you have worked on means that Maya is not doing the work in between for you. So you're not seeing this motion here. I'll go more in detail on a future episode, but that's basically why I set my keys this way. The keys that Maya gives you is this one and this one. So to go before and after. Uh, we are gonna change it to X and C. The reason why I like to change them to X and C, it's because you are already working with these keys here by default. So you have your translation, your rotation, your scale, you also have your save, you also have your undos. So your hand will actually end up being around here. So it makes sense for the keys that you will use the most to put them around your left hand side instead of having to travel all the way from here to down here. So if you go into hotkey here and then press the key that you wanna change, it will show you all the functions that the key is used for. In this case, we want to change the previous key, previous key. So we want to change this to be X. So we will press X and Maya will tell us, do you know that this is already assigned? We know that and we don't use that very much. Let's change it. So now when you press X, you got the previous key. Also, uh, we need to change the next key, which is this. So we're going to go back to here and we're going to press period and we're going to change it from next key to C and then it tells you the same thing. So now as you press the C and X, you are doing the same function as those two. One key here that I use is to uh, hide the NURBS curves. So when you're working with rigs, uh, such as this one, uh, you have uh, lots and lots of controllers that you wanna hide and you want to hide them qu as quick as you can. You're constantly doing this from selecting your NURBS to then animating. So you're constantly going like this all the time. And that is very time consuming. So it's much better for you to actually kind of set a hotkey that does that. Unfortunately, Maya doesn't have a, a hotkey that does that. So you're gonna have to rely on external plugins. If you use A tools, it's easy to do. So I highly recommend, I will do another video in the future about A tools on your preferences you have commands and hotkeys. This will give you a window that just for an animator, uh, you have 
a whole lot of stuff that you use that you can quickly set a hotkey and you're good to go. So if you're actually going through uh, the menus here, we can find that at some point we have toggle nerves curves. We are going to do that, which is our, is this key here? And that will set the key for it. You have to press this button in order to set it. It will tell you, are you sure? Yes. So now it's gonna toggle the nerves curves for you. So if you go back to this and you press our key, now by me pressing this one key, I can actually show and hide my curves. The other thing we need to do is play blast, which is another thing that you're gonna do all the time. Ideally, you want to do this as quick as you can because you're already kind of going right click, going up to play blast, and then clicking play blast in order to do a play blast. And that's way too many steps, especially if you have a slow computer that you have to play blast all the time to see your animation in real time. So um, by actually setting a hotkey to do a play blast, you just you will save you a bunch of time because you just can keep on pressing that key and you'll keep on giving you play blasts. You can set that by going back to the preferences and command hotkeys and um, Alan has a play blast here. So if you press one, so we're going to uh, press that. It will tell you to confirm, you say yes. And now play blast is set to one. So now that he's set, uh, if you actually go back here and you press one to play blast, It'll give you a play blast and Bob's your uncle. Those are the main hotkeys that I use. I, I, I won't show you anything else. I have other hotkeys to delete keys from the graph editor, to nudge keys, um, stuff like that. But we'll go into those a little later uh, once we do a little bit more advanced stuff. But for the time being, if you just change these few keys, it will actually make your life so much easier. Okay, so that's it wrapped up another video episode 8 please let me know down in the comments if I missed anything or if there's anything else you guys want me to cover there's so much more that I want to cover especially plugins I have a ton of those that are very useful and they will make your life easier on the long run I'll definitely show them to you guys um, as these tips and tricks evolve thank you very much for your viewership and your subscription if you are already subscribed if you're not Feel free to click the button subscribe before if you enjoy this and click the bell button and the like button. If you don't know what to say in the comments, just please leave a comment down below with either dope or nope. I also want to take a moment to thank you guys for all the appreciation that I'm getting for these videos. I think the amount of work that I'm putting in these videos is showing in terms of making them look as good as possible and at the same time making uh, this content as accessible as possible, especially for newcomers, people that are new to animation. Feedback is definitely most appreciated for these videos. As always, I shall see you next Monday. Until then, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the holidays, stay well, stay safe. Peace!